Let us pray. Our loving Father, thank you for being so good to me. Although I am small, you hear my call. You hold my hand and understand all of my needs and worries. Thank you, Father in heaven, for making me your child, through Jesus, our Saviour. Forgive us, Lord, for all of the wrong things we do and our sinful ways. Thank you for the family of Jesus all over the world. Please, make us all one. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Psalm 107, verse 1. John chapter 4, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Okay. Psalm 107 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. I am the way, the truth and the life. None come to the Father except through me. From John chapter 14 verse 6. Genesis chapter 9 verse 16 and the rainbow will occur in the clouds and I will certainly see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and the ever living creature on, of every kind on the earth. It says in Psalm 150 verses 6, let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Psalm chapter 34, verses 1 to 3. I will always thank the Lord. I will never stop praising him. I will praise him for what he has done. May all who are oppressed listen and be glad. Proclaim with me the Lord's greatness. Let us praise him, his name together. Amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime. Praise him, praise him, praise him when the sun goes down. Love him, love him, love him in the morning, love him in the noontime. Love him, love him, love him when the sun goes down. Serve him, serve him. Serve him in the morning, serve him in the noontime. Serve him, serve him, serve him when the sun goes down. Thank him, thank him, thank him in the morning, thank him in the noontime. Thank him, thank him, thank him when the sun goes down. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His love is eternal. Psalm 107 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. John chapter 14 verse 6. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not have perished but have everlasting life. John chapter 3 verse 16. John chapter 107 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6 verse 34 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Shift in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6. Thank the Lord for he is good. Psalm 107 verse 1. John chapter 14 verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. The blood on the doorposts will be a sign to mark the houses in which you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and I will not harm you. When I punish the Egyptians. God's protection. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Psalm 91 verse 11 God loves you so much that he never lets you out of his sight and he sends his angels to guard you and keep you safe no matter where you go. It's important that we make wise choices so we don't get hurt by doing foolish things. But it's wonderful to know God and his angels will be with us no matter what. Remember to pray every day and thank God for keeping you safe. Let us pray. Dear God, on this children's day, I thank you for all the Sunday school teachers for teaching us every Sunday. I pray your blessing upon them and the people of the church. Thank you for all the things we you have. Give us the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the countryside, our families and friends. I pray your protection on us all. In Jesus' name, Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me all the way. If I love him when I die, he will take me home on high. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so, the Bible tells me so, the Bible tells me so, the Bible tells me so. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endure forever. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. But of everlasting life. John chapter 14 verse 6 Jesus said to him I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me. Psalm 107 verse 1 Give thanks to the Lord for he is good.
First John verse 18 to 19. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Get back to your love, he is good. Psalm 107 verse 1. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6 verse 23. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Go to the good news of Jesus Christ the Son. He died and rose again. His redeeming work is done. Now it is the shed news of everyone, the good news of Jesus Christ his Son. From Matthew 18 2 to 6 he called a little child and had him stand among them and he said I tell you the truth unless you change and become like little children you will never enter the, enter the kingdom of heaven therefore whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me but if anyone causes this little one who believe in me to sin it would be better for him to have a large milestone hung around him his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea amen let us pray dear heavenly father we thank you for each new day you give us and for loving us no matter what we thank you that you are all powerful and that you are in control of everything we thank you that you have promised to be with us always Lord, we pray for those who are sick in our congregation. We pray you will stay close to them and help them to recover quickly. We also pray for those who are sad and lonely at this difficult time. 
We pray for those in our families who are cocooning and missing their loved ones. Help them to feel loved by you and those around them. We thank you for the gift of new life. We pray for those who are expecting or recently had a baby. Be with each one of them at this time. We thank you for those who have put their lives at risk to help others. We pray for our doctors, nurses and all those who work on the front line, especially those in our church. Please keep them safe in their workplace. We pray for those in our government and those who have to make big decisions for our safety. Help and remind them to look to you for guidance in all they do. On this Father's Day, we ask you to bless all the fathers in our congregation. We thank you for them and ask that you would guide them in all they do. Help us all to focus on you and shine for you always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. boys and girls, mums and dads, grandmothers, grandfathers, members of our congregations and anyone listening in here today and um, especially the boys and girls. We as Sunday school teachers have really, really missed you. We've missed seeing your lovely faces here every Sunday morning but most of all we've really missed spending time talking to you about God and his word. So we just want to share a little bit with you this morning and I want to thank you all for contributing to this really lovely special online service for our Children's Day. And I just want to talk to God before I start. Dear God and Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for every boy and girl that attends our congregations. Lord, I pray that you will take care of them, keep them safe, and mostly, Lord, that they will come to know you as their own and personal saviour. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I have heard a lot about lockdown over the past three months. You've been locked out of your schools. Some of you have been really, really happy about that. Mums and dads mightn't have been so happy about that. You've been locked out of your playgrounds. You've been locked out of going to different people's houses or locked out of not being able to see your friends. And maybe you've got to go, get and go on loads of adventures um, in or around your home, but you've been locked out a lot of different things and that got me thinking about different things that we can be locked in or out of and you know one major thing that can be locked in and if you see this dark heart here this reminds me of our sin and our sin can get locked into our heart and you know sin is the wrong things we do and I don't know about you but I know for my own children I've never had to sit down and tell them how to do wrong things they just naturally do wrong things. And I'm pretty sure your mum and dad or whoever look after you, they've never had to teach you how to do wrong things. That's because the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned. We all have sinned. Everybody in this world has sinned. The Reverend Jerry has sinned. Charlie Mills has sinned. Your Sunday school teachers have sinned. Your teachers, your mums and dads, all have sinned and come short of what God wants us to be. But you know, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this earth and 
and he never sinned. He was the only one that was on this earth that never done anything wrong. Imagine that. Imagine never doing anything bold or getting given out to for stuff that you shouldn't have been doing. Jesus never sinned. He lived an absolutely perfect life. Boys and girls, he was your age. He was six, he was seven, he was 14, he was 15. He knew what it was like to be a boy on this earth. But you know, some people were jealous when he got up to be an adult and done loads of wonderful miracles and done loads of wonderful things. Some people were really jealous of what he had done and they didn't want him to live anymore. They didn't want him to be on this earth. So they asked for him to be put on a cross and Jesus was nailed to that cross. But you know, that was all part of God's plan. God's plan was way bigger than their plan. You know, God knew that Jesus was the only one that could take away our sins, that could find a way to have our sins forgiven because of his absolute perfection. And when he was nailed to the cross, he was locked on it. I have this lock here today and you'd be doing well if you got this lock open without the key. He was locked to the cross. He was nailed to the cross. He wasn't able to get off. And when he was on that cross, he died and he was buried. And there were soldiers put at his tomb and a massive big stone put over his tomb that none of us could have rolled away. But you know, God was bigger than the soldiers. He was bigger than any government. He was bigger than any coronavirus or bigger than any lockdown that we have seen. You know, and Jesus raised from the dead on the third day. He was locked out of the tomb. He was rose again, and he is now in heaven with God, his Father. You know, boys and girls, and tells us in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world, he loves the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, if you believe in Jesus and ask him to take away your sins, he'll make your heart clean. He'll take away those sins. He'll open up the lock on those sins that are inside your heart and he will make your heart clean. You know, that really, really excites me. And when I was a little girl at the age of five, I asked the Lord Jesus to take away my sins I knew that he had died on the cross for me and I knew that I wanted to go to heaven when I die. You know, boys and girls and anyone listening here today, this gold here reminds me of heaven. You know, and heaven is a really special place and it tells us that the streets are paved with gold. They're so gold that they're see-through gold. But there's gates at heaven And you know, if we don't ask the Lord Jesus to take away our sins and believe that he died on the cross for us, we'll be locked out of heaven. We won't be allowed into heaven. And I know because I have asked the Lord Jesus to take away my sins, I know when I die, he's going to open the gates of heaven and he's going to welcome me. And he says, welcome, Janice, to heaven. You have trusted in me as your own and personal saviour. And you know, if you trust in the Lord Jesus, and I'm talking to everybody here that's watching, and if you trust in him, if you believe that he died on the cross for your sins, the green here reminds me of growing. And I'm sure we've seen lots of lovely trees growing over the past couple of weeks, and we've seen the silage fields cut to white but now they're growing green again. And we see the lovely greens in our countryside. And green reminds me of growing. And when you ask the Lord Jesus to take away your sins and believe in him, then you should grow to know him more. Talk to him. Want to know his word a little more. And you know, that is one of the most important things that you can ever do in your life. We'll just talk to God just as we finish. Dear God and Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love us. You love each one of us. And Lord, our prayer is that you would um, help people to come to know you more, Lord, that people watching here, Lord, that they would trust in you as their own and personal saviour. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we hope you have a fabulous summer. You have all hopefully signed off school at this stage. 
I'm sure the mums and dads are way more happy about that than some of you children. And we trust you have a lovely summer. We hope to see you back at church really soon. And we hopefully, God willing, will be back at Sunday School in September. Thank you for listening. Well, thanks for joining us once again today, whenever you join us, wherever you join us from. And thanks especially to all the children who have sent in uh, their wee pieces that we've all put together. Thanks to Charlie for putting that all together. Thanks to Nan Bradford for organising it. And thanks to Janice for her fantastic talk. Thanks also, all you parents, for uh, I know that you would have had no small hand in helping your children prepare what they sent in for us. Lord God, we come before you once more in prayer, conscious of the fact that we come only in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Without him, there is no way to you, Father. We thank you for sending your only begotten Son into this world, so that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord God, we thank you that by your word and spirit that we can have to do with you, that we can have that life of God in our hearts, that we can understand your word and take it to heart and that it transforms and changes us, conforming us to the image of Christ. And we thank you for that one mediator, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. For we often have flickered and failed in our faith. We often have denied you in our thoughts, words and actions. We have not served you and loved you as we ought. And we have not shown the love and charity towards our neighbours that we ought. Forgive us, Lord, for our many shortcomings which were completely our own fault. O oh Lord, We are so grateful that your holy word reminds us that you are a merciful and compassionate God and that your mercy extends through the generations. In all of this, we thank you that we have but one mediator, that we do not need to come in and through anyone but our Lord Jesus Christ and that he loves us and gave himself for us. O Lord, we thank you that this truth has been given to us down through the generations. And we pray for our children, the generation coming after us, that this truth would be vouchsafed to them, that they would have it as their own, and that the Lord Jesus would be their own and personal saviour. O Lord God, we thank you for our children. We thank you for our life and our health. We thank you for our interest in the things of God. We thank you for our Sunday school teachers and all those who strive to pass on to them the most precious and holy faith, not least their parents. Lord, we thank you for the gifting that you give to parents and to grandparents to pass on by the power of word and spirit, their most holy faith, on to their children. We thank you, Lord God, for all who help them in this, for Sunday school teachers, for those who work in ministry, and for the many resources that you supply out there in the world to assist parents in their holy calling and duty of raising their children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Lord, as we think especially today of of our children, we recall our baptismal promises, where we as a congregation have promised to see to it that they grow up in the faith. And we thank you once again for all who have participated over the years in holiday Bible clubs, in Sunday school, in every effort to see that our children come to know Jesus as Lord. We thank you for the work of CEF and especially Lord God for Andrew and Beulah and how they have worked among us uh, over our time here. And we pray for those like Brian and Hazel Parker who work with our children to see to it that they understand and grasp for themselves their most holy faith. But above all Lord God we pray for their parents as they watch them day in day out at home as they see them pray, as they see them read the Holy Scriptures, as they see them attend to worship, that they t- they would be inspired by the example of their parents and also taught directly by them from your Holy Word about the Saviour, Jesus Christ. For how else, Lord God, 
will they come to know and follow you. Lord, we lift up all parents before you today. Deepen their faith. Amidst trial, just as Peter went through trials, Lord God, confirm them in their faith. We pray for all marriage relationships, for mothers and fathers. Lord God, we pray that many families would be places where God is worshipped, not just on the Lord's day, but day and daily. O oh Lord God, we pray that you would change our world, that you would change our land, but we know that this will never happen until you first change our families. O oh Lord, bring us closer to you. May every day be a day especially for children, not just this day. Every day, Lord God, give parents the grace to teach their children of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for all who preach your gospel this day. We pray for all whose calling is to preach the gospel to all men. We pray for all those who bring a message today of salvation, of forgiveness, of God's mercy to boys and girls, to men and women, to young and old alike. Lord God, we thank you for all that you've sent forth into the mission field throughout the world to bring souls in in the great harvest. And we pray that you would strengthen and equip them for their work. We bring especially before you today, Lord God, our government, our civil service, all who work in our hospitals, in our schools. Lord God, we pray especially for those who work with our children. Lord, equip and strengthen teachers as they set their minds towards the eventual return to ordinary school hours. Lord, we thank you for our perseverance in the weeks and months gone by and pray that you would continue to, to build them up and strengthen them for their work, which is most important. Lord, we pray for parents who have had their children at home over the last number of weeks and will continue to do so. Oh Lord, strengthen them for the most holy task of parenting and equip them for it, we pray. Lord, we commit to you especially today, those who are not well, whether in hospital or at home, we pray that your spirit would bring them comfort and peace in and through Jesus Christ, the Lord. We pray for healing and we thank you for doctors, for medicine, for the great technologies that we have to combat illness. And we know in all of that, Lord, it is your hand which heals. Lord, we pray for those who have been recently bereaved and for those who grieve the loss of loved ones, although the years may have gone by, yet the loss is still acutely felt. Lord, comfort us all in our missing loved ones and in our ongoing feeling of that loss. May we look forward to that day of heavenly reunion in the new heavens and in the new earth where every tear will be wiped away, where death and pain and illness will be no more. Even so, come Lord Jesus. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Today's Bible reading is from Luke chapter 22 and verses 31 to 34. This is the word of God. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. We thank God for this reading of his sacred word. As we carry on through Luke's gospel, we are given an insight in our passage today into the chat between Jesus and his disciples after the first new covenant service of worship. As we saw last week, immediately after the service, there is a row over who is the greatest, which Jesus has to resolve and also to correct and teach his disciples about how things are to be from here on out among them. He now turns to the Apostle Peter with the ominous words, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. 
What a thing to be told after a service, and by the Son of God at that. The background that Peter would have had for this is whatever he had learned in synagogue and from Jesus about the book of Job. He probably wouldn't have had the privilege that you and I have of actually being able to hear the book of Job read from beginning to end, and he most likely wouldn't have known how to read it, even if he had access to the scrolls kept in the synagogue. But he likely knew enough to realise that just as Job was given over to Satan to be sifted like wheat, so it was to be with him. That was daunting, given what happened to Job. Remember, he lost his children, his possessions and his health. Now given that, Peter's response is admirable and courageous. Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. But as earnest as his response was and as resolved as he was in his mind, Jesus knew better. True, of all the disciples, Peter was the only one who tried to physically defend Jesus. We see that in Luke 22 verse 50 and John chapter 18 verse 10. And afterwards he was the only one who followed the arrested Jesus at a distance. We see that in Luke 22 verse 54. But when challenged by a young girl, Peter would indeed deny his Lord. Luke 22 verse 57. And afterwards weep bitterly, no doubt shaken to the core by what had happened. Luke 22 verse 62. In all of this, we see the fact that although true believers may have the assurance of their salvation shaken in many and often unexpected ways, yet they never completely fall away from God. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 12, we read how Peter rose to run to the tomb on hearing the report of the women about the risen Lord and went home marvelling at what had happened and that afterwards the Lord had personally appeared to him. Luke 24 verse 34 and 1 Corinthians 15 verse 5. When Satan sifted Peter like wheat, he was not found to have a faith that was constant and steady, but a faith that lapsed. Peter's faith was no doubt not only shaken in the moments that he denied his Lord, but as we see in his bitter weeping, Luke 24, 62, even more so in the hours that followed afterwards. The earnestness and resolve that he had shown to the Lord in verse 33 was greatly diminished as Satan sifted him like wheat just as Jesus knew would happen verse 34 the fault here make no mistake was entirely with Peter who neglected to preserve his faith in those key moments around the fire he knew this well which is why he wept bitterly Peter never protests, the devil made me do it, but at least has the integrity to take responsibility amidst his trial for his own shortcoming and falling into sin. In Peter's bitter tears, we see a wounded conscience. Peter wept for having grieved the spirit by denying his Lord. But yet, God did not reject or abandon him. Just as God allowed Satan to test Job, so he allowed him to sift Peter like wheat. But God never handed Peter over to Satan completely. The light of faith flickered for a moment, but springs back into full flame as Peter dashes to the empty tomb. Luke 24 verse 12. He weeps bitterly. Because he still has in his heart a love of Christ and sincerity of heart towards him. He weeps bitterly because in his conscience he knows full well that he has betrayed his sacred calling and duty as an apostle of Christ. But by the power and work of the Holy Spirit within him, that flickering flame springs fully to life once again. Peter's faith rises along with his risen Lord. 
This is a great assurance for us of our salvation. If Peter, who lived alongside Jesus in the flesh, who was one of the twelve apostles, who was taught personally by Jesus for years, could experience such a crisis of faith, so might we. It is not an extraordinary thing. And it is not the end of the road. Peter's salvation was not lost by his one-off denying of the Lord. Just as his salvation was not won by his one-off decision to follow Jesus. All along, it was not Peter's earnestness and resolve that carried him through. For that failed miserably. But the power of the Spirit within his heart. Our saving faith, like Peter's, may often and in many ways be assailed and weakened, but always gets the victory. And this, not by our power, but by the power of the one who has overcome the world. Once truly justified by his blood, we can never fall from that state of being justified before God. Even if, like Peter, we go so far as to momentarily, yet deliberately and decisively, deny him as Lord. Our perseverance, thankfully, does not rely on our efforts, any more than our coming to faith did. Our salvation and our perseverance in it relies, like Peter's, completely on the efficacy of the merit and intercession of Jesus Christ. Jesus explicitly tells Peter why he will persevere in verse 32. I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. This is the only reason that Peter did not lose his faith completely. And it is also the only reason that our faith does not fail completely. Even if Satan sifts us like wheat. Job saw his need for a mediator before God. We see that in Job chapter 33, verse 23. In the midst of his trials, Job saw his need for a mediator. And there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Titus chapter 2, verse 5. No one else can help us in our darkest hour where even our faith seems like it will fail us. Praise God that his plan of salvation is not for us to be saved by our earnestness and integrity of heart, but solely by the merit and intercession of Jesus Christ, lest anyone should boast. Praise God today for the continual and unceasing intercession of the Lord Jesus Christ for us, before the throne of God above, where, as the hymn reminds us, we have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, who ever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. How can we neglect so great? a salvation. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your most holy and sacred word in which we have assurance of our salvation. We thank you for the events recorded faithfully and represented for us today in and through your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your continual intercession and prayer for the Apostle Peter, through which He persevered. And not only that, but continued on in a life of faith to give us the scriptures, to plant many churches, and ultimately to give up his life as a witness to you. Lord, when our faith falters and seems like it may even fail, when we are sifted like wheat, may we be reminded by your word and spirit of your continual intercession for us at the right hand of God. For there is one mediator between God and man, 
the man Christ Jesus. In his sacred and holy name we pray. Amen. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands, my name is written. tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin because the sinless Savior died my sinful soul is counted free grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.